proper management of forest and woodland is essential to provide good tree health, to maximise yield and to preserve the natural habitat. The decisions and actions involved require knowledge of the conditions of the forest, such as tree species, health, age and so on, the hydrology of the area, the soil pH and other similar factors. Obviously the better the quality of this information that is made available to forestry planners, the more optimal their decisions will be. For commercial forestry applications, the logging of trees must be carefully managed to optimise yield and to ensure that it is sustainable. Overlogging ultimately leads to deforestation and the destruction of a natural resource and habitat. In hot climates, forests are particularly vulnerable to fire. Forest fires can be hugely devastating and potentially endanger life. The risk of these fires occurring can be determined and precautions taken to reduce risk based on data collected from the forest. In the event of a fire, expedient detection and accurate data regarding wind speed, direction, hydrology and other factors can be used to predict how the fire will spread, which is essential to directing firefighting efforts. Finally, once the fire is out, the damage suffered by the forest needs to be determined in order to update inventories and plan remedial actions. Historically, data has been collected by manual direct survey. A forest would be mapped and explored by teams on the ground. Whilst this would provide the most accurate and dependable data, it is time consuming and frequently dangerous. As a compromise, measurements can only be taken from a sample of places in the forest. For some applications, such as fire detection, a direct survey is not a sensible option, as the frequency of data collected is not high enough, nor does it allow all areas of the forest to be measured and hence protected. In this case, an overview is desirable, and a remote way of detecting fire is required. The most obvious method is to find a vantage point and look for smoke. To this end, fire towers and other vantage points are used extensively. The use of vantage points also introduce the concept of remote sensing to forestry management. Indicators such as foliage colour can be used to monitor tree species, health and hydrology. This was later refined through the use of multispectral sensors in aircraft. Light aircraft provided the ultimate vantage point for surveying large areas with remote sensing techniques. However, it is not normally economically viable to survey at a frequency sufficient for all applications. One approach is to combine airborne surveys with more traditional look -ups. Alternatively, one or more orbiting spacecraft can provide a remote sensing platform that combines a high altitude overview with daily or even more frequent revisits. Many satellites have the instruments necessary for use in forestry applications, including Iconos, QuickBird, Spot and Landsat, which are in sun-synchronous low Earth orbits. There are also GOES East and West and MTSAT, which are in geosynchronous Earth orbits. All these satellites have instruments which can monitor at least four different spectral bands, the most comprehensive being Landsat, which has eight bands. The Advanced Very High Resolution Radiometer, AVHRR, has been flying since October 1978 when it launched on the Television and Infrared Observation Satellite N, TROSE N for short. It continues to fly today on the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, Polar Operational Environmental Satellite, otherwise called POSE. The most recent AVHRR launch was the February 2009 launch of NOAA-19. NOAA's goals are to maintain two operational NOAA POSE satellites until 2010 in complementary sun-synchronous orbits. Currently, the AVHRRs on NOAA 12, 15, 17, and 18 are operational and carry an 8-inch afocal telescope. All of the satellites have an inclination of 98.9 .9 degrees, an average orbit of 833 kilometers, which allows for a revisit time of 102 minutes, or complete global coverage twice per day. One view during the daylight hours and one view at night, providing IR images twice daily. Temporal resolution for the AVHRR system is extremely high. The AVHRR supports many endeavors, but this podcast will highlight the pros and cons of using it for fire detection and mapping. The broad swath width of 2,600 kilometers, in combination with the revisit time of the AVHRR and its presence on multiple platforms, make it ideal for evaluating the entire Earth's surface quickly and repeatedly. The visible and near IR channels are used to discern cloud cover and as such are invaluable for smoke plume detection and monitoring as well. The thermal IR channels assess the temperature of radiating surfaces, cloud, water, or land. This image from the AVHRR shows the heat signature from the forest fires that burned in the southeastern United States on 13 April 1999. 
An image taken six days later indicates that the fires are heightening in intensity, evident through the increased presence of the pink hues on the land surfaces. The pink color of the ocean and lakes is the saturation of Channel 3 due to solar reflection or solar glint. Historically, this phenomenon reduced the effectiveness of the sensor when measuring surface radiance temperatures near bodies of water. The 20 April image from AVHRR shows the continuing progression of the fires through increased heat signature areas and smoke plumes. The smoke takes on the same blue color of the clouds and requires a trained eye and data processing technologies for discernment. In the instances where the clouds thickly cover the area, neither smoke nor heat signatures can be clearly obtained. This last image, taken on 22 April 1999, exhibits the burn scar resulting from the fire seen in previous images. The AVHRR can be used both to locate burn scars and to monitor their size and activity. The AVHRR system is a key player in fire detection and mapping, in addition to many other remote sensing applications. The core spatial resolution is the largest limitation of the system. It is somewhat offset by the high temporal resolution. Current data can be compared with the 20 plus year old archive images to not only trend the effects of forest fires on vegetation historically, but to make predictions about the health of future forests and likelihood of future fires. MODIS, which stands for Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectroradiometer, is an instrument which was launched into low Earth orbit by NASA on board the Terra and Aqua satellites a decade ago. The instruments can capture information in 36 separate spectral bands of varying spatial resolutions. Two have a spatial resolution of 250 meters, five of 500 meters, and 29 of one kilometer. Terra and Aqua satellites were recently used to monitor the extent of the wildfires in Australia. The red line indicates the boundaries of each fire and was overlaid during post-processing so that the path of the fires could be clearly identified. One of the main problems in remote sensing is that there is always a trade-off between spatial resolution and the size of the scanning area. Having a large scanning area and high resolution presents the problem of storage for a massive amount of information. This means one or the other will suffer. The future of the technology may therefore be in the solution to this problem. There is also a need to develop better image interpretation algorithms, which can operate in real time. This will be of great use in the event of a disaster such as a forest fire, providing real-time images to help fight the fire. It will also reduce the need for human interpreters. It would be of great benefit if the capabilities of airborne sensors such as SLICER, which provides high-resolution three-dimensional measurements that are sensitive to the vertical organisation of forest canopy structure, and DAIS, or Digital Airborne Imaging Spectrometers, which provide high-resolution hyperspectral imaging data of the terrain below, could be replicated in space. The accuracy of remote sensing technology will improve due to hyperspectral sensors like the EO-1 Hyperion, as well as hyperspatial sensors like the Econos and Eros A1 Pan. Remote sensing technology could be further improved by enhancing rapid response capabilities in the event of, for example, a forest fire, and providing high-resolution data of the affected areas in real time. Another big issue is the fusion of data from multiple different sensors, thus making the gathering of information by users easier. There are a number of important applications of remote sensing and forestry. These include the management of deforestation, inventories, the detection of forest fires, as well as monitoring the growth and development of the forest. There are also a number of different sensors, each with its own particular spectral and spatial characteristics. There are algorithms for the interpretation of sensed information, such as FIMMA, which specifically identifies fires. The future of remote sensing for forestry applications mainly involves improvements to real-time capabilities, better interpretation algorithms, higher resolutions without decreasing the scanning area, and the fusion of data from multiple sensors.